Let's get right into it. Uh, my guest is a Haitian American native of Queens, New York, a writer, Air Force veteran, the host of a new dialogue podcast. She has been a fur mommy. That's interesting, right? To her dog, Maxie, for 12 years. And she is presently unmarried, but interested. Oh, my God. We're going to unpack that. And she's in the peek through right now. Hello. Hey, welcome, Coach Barbara Joseph. Yes, sir. How you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. You looking all motherlandish. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you got your motherland yes, on. Yes. This evening, yes. Huh? You know, I actually washed my hair earlier. And so it was like, what am I going to do with it? My crown. I'm putting on my crown. That's it. <laughs> okay, I see you. I see you. So, mm -hmm. I, I, for some reason, it was fit for you being unmarried but interested in your introduction. I have to ask the first question: Why? Well, you know, it, you have to put your desire out there. So mm -hmm. that was it. It's like I'm unmarried, but I'm interested. You know, some people are unmarried and they're not interested, and some people are married and they're not interested. So I need to put that desire out there. They're not interested in the spouse they currently have. <laughs> right, right. So I just put the desire out there and, you know, so the divine God can know what my desires are. She's interested. Okay. She's interested. Now, what is she actually interested in? We got to talk about that. Okay. Well, we could go right into it. Um, marriage, fulfillment. Uh, I think, you know, I've been learning more about marriage. I haven't, I've not been married, so I'm excited to know what that would um, feel like because I'm such an independent person. I am like, you know, I'm going to go do what I need to do. And now you have to be conscious of someone else. I want to know what that feels like. You want to know what it feels like to be conscious of someone else? Yes. Because <laughs> it's just me right now, me and my dog. That's it. It's just us. <laughs> so are you telling me you, you never had a boyfriend? I've had serious relationships, but nothing now. So I need to know how that feels. And it's different. Marriage and being in a, having a relationship, you know, they go when they feel like it. You go when you feel like it. But now you are committed to someone like, no, this is us. It's not just if you find something better, you go off. You know, if I find something better, I go off. OK, yeah. now, now, now what what kind of because when you say I'm interested, there's a whole world of stuff. So yeah. what type of man are you actually interested in? You know what? I was expecting this, but I'm glad you asking because I need you to someone to come in an agreement with me. So I am conscious of who I am right now and what that mm -hmm. is. Oh, like I have a purpose. I mean, we all have a purpose, but some of us are divinely guided. They're divinely purposed. There's people. Um, what is that? <laughs> Somebody said they're going to try that. Whatever your remedy is, they're going to try to be interested, I guess. Um, well, because the, the thing is, it's like when you learn your purpose, you know, you want someone who can help you become your full self. You know, like I'm my full self right now. Mm -hmm. But there's another chapter of Barbara that I have not embarked on. And it has okay. to be someone who understands that I am a being who's exploring life. Like I'm here to flow through life. I'm here to learn. I'm here to grow. I'm here to expand. I'm here to be everything that I'm meant to be. And so I want someone who understands that and is willing to challenge me to become that, but in a loving and spiritual way. Loving and spiritual way. Let's break that down. Okay. <laughs> So let's break that down. Okay. L let's start with the, let's say the loving for the latter. Let's start okay. with the spiritual aspect. What does that, what does that actually mean? Well, the spiritual meaning that there's more to life than what we see. Everything mm -hmm. has a being, plants, animals, people. There's an existence here. And so you have to understand because I am in existence, I am part of the divine. I'm part of God. I'm part of the 
bigger picture. And so when you look at someone and you see the God in them, you treat them differently versus when you just like, OK, this is somebody who, you know, they're they're poor. They don't have anything to offer you, you kind of dismiss them. But when you see that this is God in them, God manifesting in them, their being, you see them in a light where if they are angry, they're not angry at you. They're angry because of some sort of existence they're supposed to have experience. I mean. And that's why they're in that state of consciousness. They're in that world. And so when you learn to look at people that way, you have a little bit more compassion. So when I mean spiritual, that's what I mean. That compassionate, I am a spiritual being. I might be mean and disrespectful right now, but I'm still a spiritual being. <laughs> you know, like, and you, you have to look at people in a way that you are spirit experiencing life right now. And this is the state of consciousness that you're under. Did you say mean and disrespectful? You know, I mean, I, I got to be say, I got to say that. I mean, I'm not always like, you know, like, oh, my God, hey, let's hug and kiss and stuff. No, sometimes I can be very mean. Like, if you piss me off, I can show you that mean side. <laughs> Since so. this is the fine Barbara, a interested uh, husband uh, game show, let's unpack that. Mean, All right, let's go. Mean and disrespectful. <laughs> Yes, and we Those all can are big be it. words. What, what, yes. what type of disrespect do you give? Let's talk about that. I can be very good at ignoring people, and I think Ooh. that's disrespectful. Very disrespectful yes. to very somebody disrespectful. you interested in. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. Like I can be very mean and disrespectful. Like if I'm upset, I can ignore you. Okay, so 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 doing your your quest of finding Barbara. And and becoming a better person. Uh, how do you work on that part so that's not that's not a time bomb waiting to explode in this relationship that you're looking for? Well, I'm glad you asked. Is um, I think about how I'm gonna feel after. You know, like I look at myself. Let's say someone. Um, says something to me. I imagine what I would feel saying something back to them. I imagine that. And mm. then the feeling that I get is what stops me. And so I think about how I will feel afterwards, that guilt, that that shame, like that disappointment, you know, that I have in myself. Mm. So I think about that. Now, because I am, you know, that dichotomy, that duality, thank uh -huh. you, <laughs> that duality that exists. It's like you have to learn to either feed the flesh or feed the spirit. So I Ooh. grow towards feeding the spirit, which is compassion, love, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, self-control, all those things are of the spirit. Okay. Whereas anger, resentment, bitter, that is the flesh. So it has to die to self every day. Does that okay. answer your question? Are oh, you doing a good job of dying every day? <laughs> yes. yes, I am. I am. But, you know, I just, I allow myself to be, you know, I don't have like um, this rigid way of saying, well, Barbara, you got to be perfect today because you are perfect. Perfect. I'm like, no, my, my being is perfect, but my actions are imperfect. And so that's not an excuse to just go and fool around, but. Give yourself that grace, you know, have some compassion for yourself. If you made a mistake, you said something you shouldn't have said. If you can acknowledge that, you know, I shouldn't have said that. And that is, doesn't mean you have to apologize. I shouldn't have said that. That was something that was wrong. I shouldn't have said that. And just being that honest, like I shouldn't have said that to you. That's enough because now you're taking accountability for yourself and you're coming to awareness. So another situation happens. And one of the things that as a spiritual person, I, I do realize that, God will put you in situations where if you don't learn the lesson, you're going to keep repeating it and repeating it and repeating it. Um, yes. Compassion for myself. Yes. Um, maybe I should stop reading the comments. <laughs> <But> <laughs> I mean, it, if it helps you, you know, but does, does, it, does it make sense though? Mm -hmm. So are you, um, are you one of those people you can give out mean and disrespectful? Can you also receive that? I can. If I know I was the one who's in the wrong, mm -hmm. I give grace. I'm like, you know what? You brought this on yourself, Barb. <laughs> like, I am so conscious. It's ridiculous. It's like, 
it's I'm just I'm aware, you know, I'm aware of what I did because you you got to know about the law of cause and effect. And I talk about it in my my book. If I say something to you and your rebuttal to me is in that same manner and that same tone and that same uh, expression, I got to take that. You don't know who said that. That's what you get, you know. Mm. And so when you look at life that way, you kind of don't want to do those things because everything has some sort of reaction. Right. So if you don't want that, then don't do that. Okay. And if you do it, understand it's going to come back to you. <laughs> so, You're going to come back. Okay. Yeah, just be ready for that. All right. Now, now, what's the name of your book? My name of the book of my uh, book is called The Devil is a Lie. Is he? Yes. What is he yes. lying about these days? You know, because the devil's not real. <laughs> Am I real? I, the, the, it's a, it, I, the devil doesn't exist. It's law of cause and effects. Good versus evil. You know, whatever you feed will grow. In your world, the devil does not exist. No, the world the devil doesn't exist. That's an interesting world. Now, where, where you live at? I live in Atlanta. Oh, the devil's in Atlanta. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm in Alpharetta. Like, correction. I'm in. Oh, he, he's definitely in Alpharetta. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, I think he has a palace in Alpharetta. He, he's definitely there. It's that. possible. Yeah. It's possible. But yeah. I don't live in that world where, okay, my actions, the devil's out to get me. It's like you did something. Now you're dealing with the consequences. Well, even if you didn't do it, someone did it. And now everybody else is dealing with that consequence. So you believe in uh, cause and effect, where if you do something, you cause something to happen, and at times you're going to deal with the effects. Yes, and it, and it may not even be you. It's just a reaction. A reaction. So if it's not you, who is it? Someone else might have done something. Like, for example, let's say someone was being neglectful, and they didn't or didn't know that their tire was not um properly connected to their car so they're driving down a highway tire mm -hmm. flies off and then there's an accident someone dies because of that accident now it would have somebody would be like well the devil wanted to take them no someone made a mistake that did that kind of resulted in a, a chain reaction a chain reaction took place and that is the result of that no okay. one is out to get you no one is and deliberately, unless you live in that world, you know, you live in where people really want to hurt you. But there's those there are, there's something that's causing that. And sometimes we don't understand it. We don't have that level of understanding or intelligence to say this is the result of that. Mm -hmm. But there is a greater there is greater things taking place that we know not of. OK, so so you have these things called seven keys to success, right? Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of times we we've heard about keys to success. They are they require this, this, and this. So, what would be key number one for you? Visualization, visualization. But I don't think that's the way I wrote it down. I think I was I broke it down into what how it all led, like why are they all important. But visualization, you know, it goes back to the Bible. If you can. Um, Write the vision, you know, write the vision, whatever you see, you're creating your reality based off that. But it's not what you see one time it's what you consistently see. And that's why people talk about visualization. You can visualize your life when you're daydreaming or when you are constantly in a state of um, imaging. That's how okay. you create your reality. <clears throat> OK, so. So do you think a vast majority of people are not progressing? Because that's what I call success It's just progressing in a sense. They're not they're not successful because they don't visualize success. They may not think it's possible. That's also important. You know, you can see it. But if you don't think it's possible, then you're not going to even care about it anymore. One of okay. my favorite quotes by Earl Nightingale. He says success is what someone deliberately chose to do. Now, if you see yourself having a successful, I mean, and, and a stable job, that's what you saw yourself doing and you chose to do that. You are successful. Mm -hmm. Success doesn't mean like, oh, I, I'm a billionaire and I have X, Y, Z. Success may be something you're constantly choosing yourself. I'm successful because I'm choosing to do this versus life just threw this at me. Okay. And now I'm trying to deal with it. 
That's pretty good uh, because I think a vast majority of people see success based upon how others have projected success to be. Uh, mm -hmm. Like, for instance, hey, you're only successful if you have a Fortune 500 company, Fortune 100 company. You're only successful if you have a certain amount of money. But you're saying success isn't predicated on what you gain out of life, but what you actually do. Is that correct? That's what based on what uh, Earl Nightingale, his ex way of explaining it. And he it, that's from The Strangest Secret. Uh, from his book is that where people are choosing the life that they want. If you are a stay at home mom, you chose to do that. That's success. It doesn't mean you just because you didn't go all to the office today. That's success. You chose that path. You are committed to it and you're being the best person you could be. That is your success. Now, my success might be completely different. You know, my success might be to run a marathon. That was my goal. I set out to do and I did it. That's not going to be a goal of mine, but I was successful in achieving that. You know, it's like right. something you chose to do versus you just let life um, pass you by or you're drifting through life. Your success could possibly be getting a husband on this show tonight. I mean, you know what? I'm <laughs> open for it. I believe I received the blessing of God wherever I'm at. <laughs> husband, up here. Hey, hello there. <laughs> how you doing? Hey, how you doing? Okay. <laughs> Maybe he's in the comments or he's watching or he's going to download it. He's going to be like, hey. That well, you know, for me to have put that out there, it was really an act of faith because a lot of women I'm noticing are afraid to admit they're ashamed or they don't want to admit that, you know, I'm single and I want to be married. And mm -hmm. so one of the things I've learned about faith is that you can't do what everybody else is doing. You got to you're communicating with God. So I put that desire out there and I'm not afraid to say it. Because there's not something I should be ashamed of. Like, oh, why aren't you married? It's, there's nothing I should be ashamed of. And so I'm putting it out there. You know, that's all. If I want to be wealthy, I should be able to tell people I want to be wealthy. True. <laughs> like, True. How else is this going to happen? <laughs> True. Now, do, you, do you have a time li limit on this? Is there an is there a hourglass clock attached to this? Uh, no, I don't have a time limit on this. Okay. So um, it could be the next, it could be 10 years from now, 20 years from now. You know, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. You know, I hope not because I like, I, I have goals that I want to achieve and I would like for that to be part of those goals. I, you know, if you ask me, Barbara, do you want to be a multimillionaire? I'm not going to say I want to be multimillion in 10 years. Like if it could happen tomorrow, why not? Right. <laughs> why, why would I postpone that? Why? <laughs> All right. So what's number two? Number two, I'm going to read it from the book. So that way we can stay on top. We might get to 07. We may not. Okay. The number two is um, affirmations. Affirmations. Okay. But the way I wrote the book is just, it's like, you know, what are the universes? Chapter one, chapter two, subconscious, my affirmation, visualization, manifestation, effective brain. All of these things, a positive mental attitude. These are all things that you can use to make yourself successful. Like, for example, what are the universal laws? Remember when I was speaking to you, I was explaining to you the law of cause and effect. Mm -hmm. And we also have the law of sowing and reaping. Now, this is one of the most important laws because the law of sowing and reaping is that whatever you plant, good or bad, it will manifest. So because you know that, because you know that you would want to plant seeds for success, right? So that's what you would be focusing on. Okay, if I know the law of sowing and reaping, that is irrefutable. There's no way you can go against that. It works here, it works anywhere. So you want to know what is it that you want to be successful at? What is it that you want to do? So you will use the law of sowing and reaping to plant the seeds that you want. And here's what a lot of people struggle with. It's like they put work in and they're like doing all the, the good things that they want to do. They mm -hmm. don't see the result of that and they get discouraged. Ooh. Yes. So they get discouraged and they stop. But here's the thing. Once you plant that seed, once you are uh, uh, planting that seed and you're nurturing it by being positive, you're not being negative. Like, oh, this is not going to happen. Eventually it will manifest. Like for me, me being able to tell you that I desire marriage, that's a seed that I'm planted. Mm -hmm. Now, when will it mature? Hopefully not in 10 years. <laughs> you know? but, All right. So I'm I glad you said that. Okay. So have you ever heard the story of the Chinese bamboo tree? 
And how it takes five years to shoot up. <laughs> <laughs> shoot up. Uh, that's, uh, that's a good term to use. But but yes, it it take it's a it's one of the hardest seeds. Mm-hmm. And once it's planted in the ground, it takes five years before you see any results. So mm-hmm. year one goes by. The the caretaker has to water it, nurture yeah. it, and, and do all the things that you would do. But it sees no results. Year two, mm-hmm. same thing, nothing. Year three, nothing. Year four, nothing. In year five, it sprouts up out the ground, and in less than mm-hmm. a month, it can mm-hmm. grow as 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 high as ninety feet. Right. Mm-hmm. So I've always asked the question: Did it grow in five years, or did it grow in that 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 one? Uh, that one year. Well, here's the thing about it, and, and it's kind of key to what you're saying. If the caregiver stops caring for it, now he has to do this every day. He or she has mm-hmm. to do this every day. Can't take a break, can't take a day off from watering and, and, and nurturing it, right? If he takes a day off, the tree dies underground. Mm-hmm. You can't, can't dig the seed up and see what's going on with it. You got to trust it and be patient with the process. And yeah. you can literally, they've documented it. You can stand in year five, you can stand on the ground and you'll see it sprout up out the ground in year that's five. That's awesome. I, did, I didn't know that part, but no, that's a very... Yeah. Um, so, so Barbara, you could be in year one, you could be in year four. <laughs> I think he's going to sprout up any day now. <laughs> any day now. I believe it. Actually, I think this is my my one of my best years. I mean, like I've been very fortunate, but as far as manifesting things, I've been very good at it this year. Um, I'm more conscious of it. So it's, it's something I just, I just want to see others to see like how faith actually works. Like it doesn't matter, you know, it Mm -hmm. doesn't matter if it's for healing, whether it's for money, it's faith that is however you need to use it. It's available. So that's really it. All right. Final. Let's do number three. Let's do the last, let's do the last one here. Uh, okay. What would be number three? Number three is affirmations. Affirmations. Okay. I thought and affirmation was number two. I was see. I was. I was going on. I got. I had to go back to the list. I was wrong. You, you Remember, were, I was telling you. That's why I had to pull out the book. So what <laughs> was, was number two then? Number two, the subconscious mind. Okay, subconscious mind. That sounds like scientific stuff. No, I mean, you want to talk about the subconscious mind, or do you? What do you want me to do? Let's talk about affirmations. Okay, affirmations actually ties into the subconscious mind. That's why I wrote it down that way. Look at because, that. Huh? Look at that. Yes. So the subconscious mind is how the inner things operate. Like our hearts are being, you know, how we, we're we not conscious of what is operating. So the subconscious mind, there are things taking place down in the subconscious mind, and we're not conscious of it. Mm-hmm. But that's how we create our reality is through what is taking place in our subconscious mind. So what affirmations do, like, let's say, for example, you had a traumatic experience as a child, right? Mm-hmm. In the, it's playing in your background. It's playing, okay, you know what? I didn't feel loved. I didn't feel wanted as a kid. And it's playing in the background. Mm-hmm. What the subconscious mind will do is just repeat everything that you say to it. It doesn't matter if it's true or it's not true. So when what affirmations come in is that it's an intentional reprogramming. So as you affirm, you make firm what you want to say. I am a loving person. You know, Mm -hmm. I am wanted. I am desired. As you say those repeated through repetition, and that's the key. You constantly have to repeat it. Just like how the caretaker had to constantly water the bamboo and it couldn't stop. It has to be the same way. When you are affirming something, you have to constantly repeat it into the subconscious mind because there's so much things taking place. There's so many distractions. So one little word that can throw you off after all these years of, uh, of hard work reprogramming the mind mm-hmm. one little in word somebody says no you ugly and then it's like everything that <laughs> you believed in about yourself is a lie because of what that one person said so with the affirmation you're constantly affirming what you desire what you believe about yourself um you know the thing with affirmation is not always positive it can also be negative so if you're someone who constantly say, you know, I'm a failure. I'm never going to amount to anything. You're affirming that constantly. So situations in life will take place 
to where it manifests into what you truly believe. If you feel like you are a failure, then situations, person will lose their job. They won't get have any uh, success in anything they do because they have been affirming that they are a failure. So with the universal laws, it doesn't, it doesn't matter whether you are white, black, purple, green, whether you're, you're male or female, it works the same for everyone. So when you are affirming something, you become now the driver, you become the one who can make sure that this is what I want to um, say. This is what I want to believe about myself and a ways past finding out it manifests, you know, it really do become true. Like I remember one time I used to be like, you know, I've always been an attractive person, but I never affirmed it. Mm. And then people were like, you know, you're really, really beautiful. And I'm like, thank you, because that's what I tell myself. And so people echo what I've already been saying. And so that's why affirmations are important. All right. So can you call me at 5 a.m. every morning with affirmations? No, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> it's 8 a.m. my time. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I thought I thought that was the whole the whole thing. I mean, I, oh, I, I no. here's why, because I'm not in the morning time. I don't connect until like 10 a.m. This is I'm when you. Bored. This is when you're mean and disrespectful in the morning. No, I because I'm really programming my mind. Whatever uh -huh. I say, you see, this is why you can't be honest with people. They use it against you. <laughs> <laughs> Especially no. on podcasts, they do. Yes. Say that again. Especially on the podcast, they definitely That's use it. Fine. Against I'm. I'm honest with myself. Um, I'm, I'm just honest. Like I'm. I'm not gonna do it because I know I'm not gonna commit to that. So I'm not gonna lie. You know. Okay. All right. Every other morning. No, not no, no. Once a week. I like to be, I like to slowly start my morning. I mean, I usually log into work about seven thirty. Okay. Um, yeah. So by eight o'clock, I'm like, hey, I'm not gonna do it. I might do it once in a while. Like you know, like hey, I just thought of you, but I'm not gonna be. It's, <laughs> hey, it's not I, me. I just it's not me. <laughs> huh? Uh, hey, I just thought of you. It's it's been nineteen weeks. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not gonna do it. You know, some people set themselves up for failure. I'm not gonna do it. All right, cool. All right, Barbara, if people want to connect with you because uh, you're taking applications this season, how can they do so? <laughs> DM me. <laughs> no, but um, I can uh, coach Barbara J at gmail.com. That's another way to reach me if you're not on social media for some reason. But I take some times off social media. So sometimes if that's not that's you, you can um, send me an email, coachbarbaj at gmail.com. I'm also looking for a guest for my podcast as well. So if they're interested in joining me, I would love to have them. All right. Well, you got to have me on your podcast. I mean, it's, it's no, you, you no, you're going to start asking me questions. I'm like, hey, this I, is my I, podcast, buddy. <laughs> yeah, you you, you got to ask me the questions. I, I want to talk, you know? Yeah. Okay, I would like to have you. It's not as formal as this. It's more of an audio, though. Uh, well, you know, I'm, I'm different. <laughs> I see, I see. But thank you so much for having me. I enjoyed our conversation. Thank you so much for being on. And uh, we'll talk again soon. I'm going to send some people to your DMs. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I got I got criteria. I didn't seem to be mean about it on the air. <laughs> oh, I know. I know you got criteria. You just didn't talk about it tonight. That's why you don't have all these people in your inbox right now. You know? <laughs> Yo, 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 yo. You're in the mix. The world's finest, man. DJ. Just watch it. I have the radio on the telly.